everybody doing tonight? Just want to welcome you here. Why don't you go ahead and stand if you're not already standing with us? Let's just take some time to come into the presence of God tonight. I'm confident that He's here because His Word says that He is. And so as we uh, start worship tonight, let's just set aside our hearts and our mind and prepare them for worship tonight, to worship God. into your courts tonight, God. God, we come into your throne room boldly, Lord. We thank you for your love, God. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who's made the way, God. God, we wait for you to come and show your glory. with that we wait for you to come and show your glory here today oh we wait for you to come and show your glory
drink of glory wonder hear the cry out come and fill this place oh come and fill this place we wait for you and we wait for you to come and show wait on the Lord right now. Just be still in His presence. I just hear the scripture right now. Be still and know that I am God. We stand in all of you, Lord. Everybody, as you're standing there, um, this afternoon, I went for a prayer walk around our neighborhood, and uh, I just really felt like the Lord spoke specifically to me about just my mind was in several different places, and I wasn't anxious, but I wasn't focused either. And I was thinking about uh, people that I know that are still recovering, and Harvey, and leading some of that effort, and people that are you know, facing uh, the onslaught of Irma. And the Lord said, just spoke to me. You know, Sunday we talked about giants and said, okay, so there's woman giants too. And her name is Irma. And so I thought, I wonder what Irma means. So I looked it up and Irma means in the, the German uh, dialect, it's a it's actually a nickname and it means universal or whole. And people are talking about, you know, it's catastrophic, it's apocalyptic, it's whatever. And, but a, another definition of the name is goddess of war. And I thought, well, there you go. Uh, that, that hadn't really been a threat to the Lord and so the, the Lord said, I felt like he spoke to me that until we can face giants in our life and really pray effectively, um, not just out of alarm or fear or whatever, but pray effectively and strategically, we, we have to pray the word. We have to stand on the word. And so uh, three scriptures came to mind and I want to... Uh, kind of intersperse them tonight, but specifically just put them into action. And so I know you know this scripture, but I want you to hear it again with your spirit, not, not just with your ears. Some of you even know the address. Philippians 4, 6 says, of course, all of you one at a time, do not be anxious about what? Anything. anything one more time I want you to hear it with your spirit do not be anxious about anything if we could put it in reverse and just back it up one or two verses it doesn't start with our anxiety it starts with rejoicing it said rejoice in the Lord always I'll say it again rejoice then he said do not be anxious about anything um, but in every situation with prayer and thanksgiving or petition let present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding when you can't find a legitimate reason for the peace of God, it, if you'll allow the word to rise up in you, you'll experience it. In spite of what's going on around you. You know, that 
in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, before the storm ever gets close, Sam's Wholesale Club runs out of water. The world is not coming to an end, I promise you. But see, just that whole spirit, people started getting alarmed and shook. Or we could go to conventional wisdom like the teenage boy when I was standing in Sam's and said to his mom, what are we gonna do? His mom said, we just need some water. We need to get water. And he said, well, mom, they don't have any water, but they have beer and it's mostly water. So, so we should stock up on that. And then it, as a teenage kid, went, here's what he said, seriously. No, seriously, mom. They say that, that it, that's the next best thing. They say. And so I looked at him. I actually caught his eye and looked at him and went, mm. and he smiled like, oh man, busted. Okay, so I wouldn't necessarily advise that, but in your anxiety, you can respond appropriately. Amen. What we want is the peace of God. But rather than just crying out for peace, the Lord said, if you start with rejoicing and, and then you let your rejoicing precede your anxiety, even put it this way, let your rejoicing be louder than the anxious voice in your heart. And then he goes on to say that the peace of God, we, when we pray, we do so with a grateful heart, with thanksgiving, we let that lead. And the peace of God, which transcends understanding when, when it doesn't make sense. And then when conventional wisdom tries to crowd in and you know, conventional wisdom says it's going here or there or whatever. Conventional wisdom says when Jim Cantore shows up in the landmass between Louisiana and Alabama, it's over. Um, but Jim Cantore isn't the Lord Jesus. And so I'll just leave that at that. Here's the next scripture I want you to get. I want you to hear it with your spirit. Psalm 107 says this. Uh, let's see. He's talking about um, someone out to, on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters and they saw the works of the Lord, but basically they were caught in this huge storm and so much so that they, they were in peril and their courage melted away. And then it said, they reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wits end, but then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. He stilled the storm to a whisper and the waves of the sea were hushed. They, the sailors, were glad when it grew calm. So are we, amen? They were glad when it grew calm and he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. As we're here tonight, just in this aspect of worship, Philippians 4 goes on even after that to say what to fix our mind on, what to focus on, whatever is right and pure and true and lovely and a good report. Think on these things. And so tonight, just as an act of worship, could, could we just uh, take every thought captive? You know, if Jesus said we were to worship the Lord with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. How do we do that? Well, one way is we don't let our mind and our thoughts control that we take our thoughts captive and present them to the Lord as an act of our worship and saying, Lord, help me. Where I need understanding, you can give me wisdom where I need to make decisions, where I need to make preparations or whatever it is, but I can do so with a different spirit. And I just feel like that's a word for somebody tonight that God wants to touch you in the midst of things that could cause great anxiety. And it's not just a storm. For some of you, you need to speak to the storms in your own life, not just one out here in the Gulf. For some of us, it's easier to speak to somebody else's storm because you're not in it. 
but you still have that authority. The word of God is still the word of God. Amen. And so we're going to pray for that and we're going to pray for one another here in a moment. But right now as we do, can, can we just take whatever might be causing us anxiety and anxiousness in our thought, in our minds, things that we were, fo- we were focused on other than the Lord and what causes gratitude in our heart. And right now, could you just do that? If you need to be seated and to, to just have one less distraction, you're welcome to. But let's just take a minute right here as an act of worship. Father, I thank you for the power of your word. That when you give us a commandment, it's not to make it more difficult for us. It's so that we can get it. It's not even to make our lives easier. It's to make it so that we can receive it. It's to simplify what the devil tries to complicate in our life. Few things are necessary, really only one, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Father, we don't do so in foolishness. We don't do so in procrastination. We do so because that's where wisdom is. That's where life is. That's where power begins to come. So right now, I pray that we would take every thought captive. We wouldn't let it run rampant in our mind. We wouldn't let it seek to get down in our heart, to mix with emotion, to cause the wrong forces to be empowering our lives. Father, I pray that every storm that's going on in our lives, in our physical bodies, in our minds, in our emotion, pray that every person who's concerned about somebody in the storm of a path, or in the path of a storm, whether one that's already hit or flood waters that have risen or lives in a certain part of the country or the world. God, I thank you that you have promised to take care of that which concerns us. What we need to be concerned about is you. Being in a place where the peace of God guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus where our gentleness is evident to all because God is near. Where people see our rejoicing and not our reactions. Where we take that anxiety and that giant that steps in our path head on. And we lift up the name of the Lord higher and greater. So I thank you right now. Come on, would you just lift up gratitude in your heart? May you want to just Open your hands as an expression or your heart to the Lord. Come on, let him hear your voice. Give him gratitude for his protection, for his provision, for his faithfulness, his constant love in your life. Thank him for the storms that he's already brought you through. Thank him that you're here tonight just to worship, just to return thanks back to him. Don't take it for granted. David was a king, but he was also a worshiper. He said of all the things and all the places he could be, all the castles that he built and the opulence of his kingdom, he said, one day, one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to ever dwell in the tents of the wicked. God, I wanna be where you are. I wanna be where you've called me to be. And I want peace to rule my life. Father, I wanna be a peacemaker, not just a peacekeeper. I wanna change the atmosphere when I walk into a room, into a store, into a situation, into a meeting. Lord, not because of my wisdom and insight, personality, or just because of your presence in my life. Lord, I thank you for it. Come on, if that's you, just speak to the anxiety in your life right now. and Just say, I will not be anxious. If your word says, don't be anxious about anything, then Lord, I don't receive the condemnation. I receive the permission 
to take authority over anxiety. Father, we take the anxious thoughts captive and we lay them before you. Just in our worship right now, we thank you that they that wait on the Lord renew their strength. Father, that they mount up, they can run and not get weary and walk and not faint. We just speak your word over our life, and over every aspect in it. Father, we speak to the storm. We speak to Irma, the goddess of war. And we thank you that your name is greater than that. That you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, just like you can change the weather pattern overnight. And here we are with a cold front that's passed through. It's just refreshing. It's life-giving to us. Father, we pray that you would just take that cold front and push that hurricane back out in the Atlantic. Father, we pray that just as your word declares that you calm the storm to a whisper and that you made the waves cease. Father, I thank you that your word declares to us in the gospels that you had such peace in your life that you were the prince of peace that you were asleep in the midst of a storm that caused great fear Lord it wasn't just a natural storm it was a spirit of fear causing the storm and when you got up you rebuked the wind and you spoke to the waves that there was a spiritual source but there was a natural result and God you dealt with both of them and it became completely calm then the disciples were alarmed they were terrified and said who is this even the wind and waves obey him Father I thank you that the wind and waves still obey you and no matter the roar of the velocity of a hurricane or a tornado, you can calm it to a whisper. And God, the natural results of that, you can speak to them and change it as well. You are Lord of all. And so, Father, I just pray your peace would come in our lives right now as we declare that. That we just continue to stand in prayer. We just continue to see it in our life, but we use it as an example as we begin to speak to the storms in our own life. We begin to pray in a moment for one another. We begin to speak that same word and that same declaration of peace, total calm over their life, over their situation, over their physical bodies. Father, I thank you that as we bring ourselves into your presence right here and as we wait upon you, we begin to receive the blessing and the benefit of those who wait before they work. Father, that act of worship, the act of patiently waiting, not because you're late, not out of anxiety of whether or not you're gonna show up. Father, waiting until our hearts are in a place where they're open to receive, where our minds, Lord, aren't distracted with other things, but they just welcome you. And so we do. God, we welcome you into this place. We welcome you in the spirit of worship. We welcome you into every aspect of our life, body, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' name. Father, your word declares in Romans 12 that as a spiritual act of worship, we present our bodies to you. So I pray that we would do that even now. Father, if there's a condition, if there's blood pressure or anxiety issues, if there's a physical infirmity causing anxiousness in our life, causing distraction, causing worry, Father, if there's a bad test result, if there's a 
procedure that we're facing, if there's pain, whatever it might be. God, I pray that we wouldn't interpret it. I pray that we would simply bring it to you. Say, Lord, here, I'm presenting my body to you as a living sacrifice. This is my act of worship. I'm waiting on you, Lord, in your presence just to flow through me. Jesus, I thank you for it. That you begin to focus our minds and our hearts on the power of your word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Father, I pray that we would wield that sword with great skill in prayer and precision. No wasted motions, no exhausted flailing. No fearful reactions. Father, with the calm of a warrior, totally in the command, battle ready, listening, waiting, watching. Lead us, Lord, I pray. By your spirit and through the command of your word. God, I pray that we would just position ourselves in that place of authority that the peace of God brings into our life. The thanksgiving establishes us in, in our hearts. So that as we cast out anxiety, anxiousness about anything. Father, that your overwhelming peace begins to flood in. Past our understanding, how does that work? We don't even have to know. We just thank you that it does. Every time, in Jesus' name. Right there where you are, can you just take a moment and worship. Jacob, lead us a little bit farther in that. And then we'll come together and pray over one another in that same spirit, presence of the Lord. We see God with us, God for us. Nothing can come against, no one can stand between us. God Come against no one can stand between us. Oh, no one. Come on, sing that out with me, God with us. God with us, God for us. Nothing can come against. No one can stand between us, God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, oh, where there was death you brought life. Where there was death, you brought life, Lord. Where there was fear, you brought courage. And when I was afraid, you were with me. And you lifted me up. Yes, you lifted me up. Where there was death, where there was death. Brought life, Lord. Where there was fear, you brought courage. And when I was afraid, you were with me. And you lifted me up. Yes, you 
Yes, you lifted me up. You lifted me up. You lifted me up. And you lifted me up. So we see God with us. God for us. Nothing can come against. No one can stand between us. God with us. God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, nothing can separate us from your love, so we sing, God with us, God for us. Nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us. There was death, you brought life, Lord. Where there was fear, you brought courage. When I was afraid, you were with me. You lifted me up. Yes, you lifted me up. Where there was death, where there was death. Brought life, Lord. Where there was fear, you brought courage. And when I was afraid, you were with me. And you lifted me up. Yes, you lifted me up. And you lifted me up. Yes, you lifted me up. God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us. pray for some people tonight that just uh, are in a place you just need to receive uh, some prayer. So if that's you, just lift your hand and we'll pray with you. Nobody? Okay. God bless you. We're dismissed. Well, good. Then be bold. Be strong. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Did you raise your hand over here? Ms. Zola, was that you? Raise it up again so we know. Kim, others of you. Sorry, I wasn't joking. Bill as well. Awesome. Back here. Just so we know who you are. Amen. Would you all stand together with me? Can I lead us in that? Just a time of praying. In fact, if you're receiving prayer, you're welcome just to be, stay seated. And if you would, just uh, some of y'all pray with Kim up here as well. Just put a hand on him. And can we do this just kind of as a point of focus? Can, can we just pray a head to toe prayer? Can we just let the Lord lead us? And I want you to think, just listen to the spirit of the Lord as you pray. But I want us just to stop, start at the top of their head. And I want us just to pray all the way down. Not a long prayer, but if God impresses something on you. So we're praying, starting at the very top of our head. Father, we thank you that you are over us. You're our authority. You're the one that overshadows us, oversees us, that you're our covering. 
Father, as well, you've given us a mind and we have the mind of Christ. And so we don't have anxious thoughts. Father, we don't have to process everything internally. And I pray for any uh, abnormality in brain function or even chemical reactions in our physical bodies. Father, I just pray for uh, all of the thought processes, God, in our lives. And for us as believers, it's certainly not just brain function. It's the Spirit of God operating in us, but He operates through our thoughts as well. Father, we pray over our hearing, over our sight, over our noses, Father, and our senses in life. We pray over our mouths, the powerful outlet uh, of out of the abundance of our hearts. God, our mouths speak and pray that the life of God would just fill us to overflowing. Father, as we pray down through, we pray over our necks and our entire spinal system. God, the intricate network of nerves and muscle and bones and uh, all of that. Father, we pray over every disc. We pray over alignment. We pray over uh, strength. We pray over even the internal aspects of that, of the calcium and uh, bone strength. Father, I thank you that the, the prophet spoke a word and brought dead, dry bones back together again and filled them with the life of God and made him an exceeding great army. And so I pray for every person who's struggling with uh, joint pain and bones and that whole dynamic. Father, back problems. We pray that Daryl would be healed uh, tonight as well as we're just including him in that. God, with his uh, back problems and surgery that's awaiting, I thank you that you're the God that's more than enough as he's declared over and over. Father, we pray uh, over our hearts and our chest. We pray over all of that, Father, that you have placed within us and the, ask that you would use it in a great way, Father, that you would use it as a place, not just that the life flow of God, the blood flow in our system, but literally the, the place where uh, courage is strengthened and boldness uh, has a greater flow in our life as it goes through our heart. Father, we pray for purity in our hearts and in our inmost thoughts and our being. Father, we pray for our spirit. We pray for our whole digestive system. Father, we pray for uh, hips to be strengthened. We pray for our legs, Lord God, to uh, be the thing that brings stability and strength in our life, that we walk with steadiness. Father, you said we could walk and not faint. And so I thank you for that. God, you make a smooth path for us. You make a highway through the wilderness. Lord, I thank you for the power of your word that how beautiful on the mountain are the feet of them who bring good news. And so Father, I pray that you would strengthen us even from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. Father, we pray over our limbs and our extension. We pray over arms and hands that would be used mightily for the Lord. Pray for a fresh anointing, Father, on our hands to be laid on people and to see them healed and recover in Jesus' name. Father, we just give you praise and glory and honor for that. We pray right now, Lord, that just the words that you've spoken over us and into us to release over people's lives. We thank you, Lord, that we just cover it and we're surrounded by your presence. Father, that we establish ourselves on you, that you go before us and behind us and put your hand upon us, completely hemming us in. So we just give you praise and glory and honor tonight as we receive that which is ours in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Is there somebody here tonight that word would describe you and that you would just say that there's a, a storm in your life. Maybe it's in your mind, just a storm of thoughts or in your heart, just that sense of anxiety. We just, I want to, I just felt specifically as I was praying this afternoon that we needed to speak to storms in people's lives. 
and, and that God wanted to do that. Anybody? You'd say that's me. Man, that's not a bad thing. That's good. Back here, two of you. Ms. Zola, amen. You're getting a double dose. Are you ready? And some of you just pray for these. Back here, raise your hand again. And Father, we just pray right now in Jesus' name. We just speak to the storms in their life. God, we speak peace in the midst of every uh, aspect of fear. Just as you stood in the boat, the disciples were afraid of the storm. And they were afraid of the waves. And they were afraid that you didn't care that they drowned. Father, I thank you that there are so many things where fear can come and speak so loudly in our life. In the midst of the storm, we can see that the waves are terrifying. We can see that the wind is howling. We can, and it's, it's got us convinced that we're not going to make it. Father, we speak to the storm in hearts and minds and emotions and lives, even to the natural events. God, that would just contribute to that. The evidence of, man, it's falling apart. It's just, how are we going to get through this? And so we speak to that storm in Jesus' name. And with the same authority that he spoke to a physical squall, a sudden storm that came up and took them by surprise, he rebuked it in Jesus' name. And then he spoke to the waves that were the result of that, that were crashing against the boat, and it became completely calm. So Father, we just proclaim peace in the midst of the storms in hearts and lives tonight. We proclaim your word, and Father, by your authority, completely calm. The peace of God. Father, your word says in Philippians chapter four that it's not just the peace of God that passes understanding. A few verses later, you said, in the God of peace. We get the peace of God, and then we get the presence of the God of peace. Established in our life, just like Jesus was in that boat. Father, we thank you for it tonight. We speak peace in the midst of every storm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good? Let's worship over that a little bit more. How about it? Amen? Jacob, you got something else? No, it's, it's just... There's nothing like... Here's conventional wisdom, the calm before the storm, which is really rooted in fear. Well, this is just the calm before the storm. Jesus speaks peace in the midst of the storm, and it's not the calm before the storm, it's the calm after the storm because he calmed the storm. Conventional wisdom says we need to issue a storm warning Storms are coming. Spiritual wisdom says, storms are gonna come, but I'm bigger than the storm. With every storm that comes, you can have peace in the midst of it. It's what we choose to focus on. The disciples in the gospels in the midst of the storm were focused on the wind and the waves. And then really, fact that Jesus wasn't helping row. How, how could you be sleeping? And then they were focused on the fact that it seemed like he didn't care. Don't you care that we drowned? And it's so easy to let those things, whatever those things are, the winds that swirl and the waves that 
crash and roar and heave and toss you around to, to get your focus on that and then mess with your emotions. Fear is a liar. And the more we listen to it, the more we let the lies just drip down in our heart. And it poisons us. And we get more used to hearing and believing lies based in fear than we do truth. One word, Jesus stands up. He didn't enter into a discussion. He didn't even respond to them initially. He dealt with the problem, dealt with the storm, dealt with the waves, and then said to them, why do you have so little faith? It wasn't a rebuke as much as the sense of, I think from Jesus, disbelief. And then it said, when they saw that it had become completely calm, they were terrified. See, first they were afraid of the storm, then, then they were kind of freaked out about Jesus. They'd never seen that much power and authority. As powerful as the storm was, Jesus' word was more powerful and they didn't have a mechanism for that. And so, I mean, it's funny. They were afraid, now they're terrified. When the problem's fixed, they're still dealing with the giant of fear. And so Jesus guides them through it. Mark's gospel, he connects that story with the, in the same context of the parable of the sower, the power of the word of God. And then right after that, the Jesus going in and confronting the young man in the region of the Gadarenes that was struggling with demonic issues in his life. And you see the same elements. Jesus moves with great compassion, but great power and ultimate authority. And the people don't know how to respond to it. So they ask him to leave. But the young man who's totally delivered comes back to Jesus and asks to go with him. See, when you love people and you love them powerfully and you love them well and you love them into wholeness, you don't have to counsel them through their fears. You just cast it out. And Jesus told the young man, go back and tell your family what God has done for you. And it says he reached 10 cities for God. He went back and reached the Decapolis. See, when God deals with the things that are controlling our life and but does so in such a powerful way that brings us back, he just recalibrates that we're not listening to fear anymore. When we listen to the word of God, it casts out fear. like love does but conventional wisdom says love is scary love is risky love anything you got to be vulnerable and God said right but that love is so powerful you don't need to be afraid of it you need to use it against the fears of love because what you really need is not to feel better about yourself what you really need is to respond to the love of God and then walk in it. Nothing more powerful in the world. Amen? So thank the Lord. How many glad you came to church? How many thankful for the word of God? Amen. How many have more peace genuinely than you had when you came in tonight? How many of you that were prayed for there's a noticeable change in condition or heart or thought. Amen. Awesome. Let's just thank God for that, can we? Can you just lift your hands right there where you sit? 
Father, as we began this time with rejoicing and just looking to you, thank you that we can conclude it in the same way. Because there's no expiration date on gratitude. Father, there's no limit on our thanks and appreciation. Because it's not for an event, it's not an action. It's the open door into relationship. So Lord, we thank you for that tonight. We thank you for your touch. God, we thank you for your gentleness in our lives so that our gentleness can be evident to all. Lord, I thank you that your peace such a powerful, tangible thing. It's not a force. It's a force. It's not a feeling. It's a power that only comes from your presence. So Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you that you sent your word and healed. So we send that word tonight with every person as they go. We send it into every situation that concerns us in those areas that we prayed for tonight, family members and friends and those that you've connected us with. Thank you for that. Father, I pray that as we've been established in peace, we would walk in that peace that we would minister that peace. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, um, as we worship tonight, on your way out, if you would, the offering box back there by the door, if you brought uh, tithes and offerings tonight or something to present to the Lord. uh, Didn't want to miss that, but didn't want to interrupt the flow either. Amen. So thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, Thank you for your giving, for hurricane relief, and just for who you are and what you do. Find somebody around you before you go tonight. Stand together with me. We can fellowship a few minutes. Love on one another. Meet somebody that you don't know. Welcome somebody that you haven't seen in a while. Enjoy one another. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a great week.